Hey everybody, it's Sydney Taylor and you're about to listen to my interview with the one and only Jeff Pilston from Dokken, Dio, Foreigner, War and Peace, and so much more. Uh, this was recorded live on air on my radio show, Metal from the Strip, which you can listen to every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on newartsradio.com. So definitely tune into my show. But me and Jeff talked about so much. Um, we talked about his new uh, project with George Lynch, Mick Brown, and Robert Mason entitled Superstroke. We talked about the recently announced tour with Foreigner, White Snake, and Jason Bottom, and we even talked about the new Last in Line album that's due in uh, the fall of 2018. You know, we just talked about so much. It was such a great interview, so great to talk to him. Jeff is such a nice guy, and I'm so looking forward to seeing him this summer, um, hanging with him, and to even possibly talk with him again in March. Uh, if you listen to the interview, you'll see why. But uh, definitely like, share, subscribe so you can hear uh, more interviews like this. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello. Hello, Sydney. Hey, Jeff. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Very, very good. Great. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fabulous. I'm doing fabulous. Great. Thank you so much for calling in tonight. I really appreciate it. Of course. It's my pleasure. Um, you know, I am a, a huge fan of not just doing this uh, just for the name. You know, you. I'm a huge Dawkins fan, a huge fan of you. Uh, so it's really an honor to be talking with you right now and, you know, having you on my show. I really appreciate it. Oh, well, well great. I, I'm really glad of the work you're doing. It's, it, it's great. It's wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, so, yeah, I got that, uh, video from you, uh, my friend Mark, uh, from, you know, the website I work with, uh, he took that video, of, um, of you saying hi to me, that was really great, uh, the Frontiers Bash. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, I, 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 I knew I was going to be doing this, so I thought it would be a cool thing to do. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I heard that that show was such a good show, and I was so mad I couldn't be there, I'm on the way across the country. Uh, how was that for right. you? Was it fun? It was really fun. Um, I mean, I'm, for one thing, Frontiers is turning into you know, like the label for this kind of music, and um, they're they're really dedicated. They're they're really um, they they genuinely love the music. I mean, that's why they're doing it, and so their their commitment and their passion about it is very very strong. And uh, I'm really glad I'm involved with them because I get to do all these fun records, and you know, it's hard to. You know, it's hard to make a living recording music anymore. You know, it's live music is is much more the way that people make their living now. So, but for me, I love the studio. I mean, of course, I love to play live, but but mm. uh, I love the studio. I love writing music. I love working with other musicians. I love, I just love being in the studio. And Frontiers has given me an opportunity to do that a lot with a lot of great people. So, uh, and then Eddie Trunk was there, so we talked about it and. Uh, I, I just it it had a great vibe. The people were great. Um, the excitement about all the music is really great, and the show itself was great. So there you go. Yeah, no, Frontiers is definitely like you said, becoming like the label for this stuff. Um, I'm like yeah. every day. I'm it's popping up. I'm seeing new people being signed, and it's it's like it's really cool that like you said, you know, something this label so interested in having you know you guys on there. It's you know, uh, my friend Rachel Lorin just got signed. You know, L.A. Guns' his new record just came out, which is really big. So, yeah, no, mm -hmm. it's definitely the label right now for, you know, the hard rock. It's it's great. It is. It is. Now, I know the name Rachel Lorin. Where do, where do I know that from? Um, I know her. Uh, I used to live in uh, New York, uh, so I went to The Chance. I don't know if you know that venue. It's in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, she performs there a lot. And I oh, remember yeah, I saw her live. I yeah. I know that venue. Okay, uh, yeah, the name is really familiar. I, I have a feeling I've met her or something. Anyways, well, all, all great, all good stuff. Yeah, so um, I think the topic of the hour for you right now is uh, the release or the announcement of your new group with uh, George Lynch and Mick Brown and, of course, uh, Robert Mason from Warrant. Uh, and it's been getting a great, great reception from what I've seen. You know, how do you, how do you, does it excite you, you know, the reaction that you've been getting from it? Yeah, I was quite pleasantly surprised. Actually, my phone, uh, you know, the texts and the emails and everything have actually blown up more about that than they did when 
when we announced that the DACA reunion was happening, which which surprised me. I mean, I you know there was of course there was excitement about the DACA reunion last year, but this one even seems to be getting a better response, or at least people are being more vocal about it. I should say, mm-hmm. um, and it's yeah, it surprised me. It's been great. It is exciting. The music that we've done so far has been really. I, I mean, it's really something that moves me. So, uh, and you know we played it for the Frontiers people while they were uh, out here for the show, and they were really excited. Um, and I just, it's like, I, how do I explain it? The, the, the guys in, um, in Frontiers, what, something they said, which I thought was kind of cool, was they said, well, like, this is sort of our ideal band. You know, we were, a hu- were huge Dawkins fans, and Robert's voice is just so superhuman that, uh, and that's kind of how I feel, too. It's kind of like, being in an ultimate band and uh the music is great the energy is great george is playing like he's just playing so incredible right now Mm -hmm. and robert's you know robert always sings incredible but to hear it all put together um the way we've done it and the 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 music that we're crafting is just really strong and i'm really excited about it so yeah all good yeah, no, I uh, recently uh, just saw Warrant in October, and uh, yeah, so I saw Robert, and uh, he's definitely, he got a great voice, and uh, he's, you know, doing, he's really doing well and not trying to be Janie Lane, but, you know, right. doing his own thing, so no, uh, he's definitely a really strong uh, choice for you guys, so I'm really excited to see what that's going to sound like. You know, are you, you guys are in the middle of making the music, and if I remember correctly, I heard you say it's you guys are aiming for a release in late 2018. Uh, what it's looking like after speaking with the Frontiers people is that we're going to come out in October of 2018. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's that's the plan, and uh, there's really no reason it couldn't happen, um, you know, barring some bizarre circumstance, because uh, we're very on track for finishing the music. I mean... George and I have written nine pieces of music, and uh, Robert and I have finished four vocals. So, um, you know, we're, I'd say we're a third of the way through the record, and it's December, so we're, we're doing really well. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, it, right. Continue on that track, and yeah, you guys are definitely aiming for a release in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, on top of that, because you're like the busiest guy ever, um, you guys <laughs> just announced, uh, Foreigner just announced a tour with White Snake and uh, Jason Bottom. Yes, we did. Uh, that's going to be in, it's going to start in June of 2018. And, uh, yeah, another great package. I mean, uh, White Snake and Jason Bottom with, I mean, it's going to be a night of great rock and that's going to go from june till i believe well in uh, yeah i guess into august um and uh tickets are on sale and by the way um until the end of this month there's a holiday special going on with those tickets where lawn seats are uh on sale for 20 bucks all in you know tax all that kind of stuff 20 bucks for uh, lawn seats to this show. So uh, you want to do a little stocking stuffer. Uh, this is gonna be, <laughs> it's going to be a great, great package and a great tour. Uh, and what a great deal for the show. So, um, yeah, until December 31st, I know we're offering that deal. I believe it's at Ticketmaster.com or or uh, it might even be at, um, no, I guess Ticketmaster is the place to go. So, yeah. Yeah, no, you guys are coming to uh, Camden, which is, like, right across um, the, a bridge from me, literally. Uh, so I will definitely be there, without a doubt. So you're kind of Philly? Yes. Um, I uh, oh. Right now, I'm actually, this is my college radio station. Um, but, yeah, I go to college in Philly. I live in Philly all year round. So, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, I will nice. definitely great. be at the Camden show, without a doubt. <laughs> oh, great. Great, great, great. Yeah, it's going to be fabulous. Well, great. I'll finally get to meet you. Yes. I don't think I've ever met you. No, I have never <laughs> met you either. You um when you guys did the 40th uh, anniversary tour last year, which also I heard was great. Um you guys yeah. actually came to Bethel Woods. Right. And um I didn't have the opportunity to go. I was so mad. It was like the crappiest rain day ever. <laughs> and it was like okay. so bad. I wanted to go so badly, but I'm so happy I'm going to be able to see you guys this summer. It's going to be a lot of fun. And great. yes, I would love to meet you. That'd be great. 
Yes, I'm sure we will. That that that's fabulous. Uh, it, yeah, it's going to be a package to to remember. I know that. Yes, for sure. Um, so, uh, like I mentioned when you first came on the phone, I am a huge Dawkins fan. Um, you know, I grew up listening to this music. You know, my parents are huge fans, and my mom right about now, who's listening, wants me to probably tell you hi because she's also a huge Dawkins fan. <laughs> Um, oh, well, th tell her thank you. <laughs> but, you know, I grew up uh, around this type of music, and, you know, I have, you know, developed my own love for it. And this is a question I like to ask, you know, everybody, you know, what is it like to have, you know, I'm 18 years old, and I know that there are probably fans, you know, who come to the shows who are even younger than I am. You know, what is it like to have fans that are, you know, younger and, you know, discovering your music now instead of listening to, you know, the crap the that's on the radio, day. really. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? I, I mean, I think it's great. And, and I, I think it's kind of a testament to that um, a lot of the music, you know, 80s music or whatever you want to call it, or just rock. I just like to call it rock, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of missing from... I mean, there are new, newer rock bands, no question about it. There's bands like 21 Pilots that are great, and there's all that kind of thing. Um, but it the music that we do is different, but it is, it is well done. I mean, if I may toot my own horn a little bit here, I mean, what we do is we do it well and we do it with a lot of energy. And I think it's kind of unique. Uh, you know, the newer bands, there are, like I say, there's a lot of newer, new, cooler bands, but they're, it's different. So I think when people, when young people, a lot of young people anyways, when they first hear the, the music that we do, uh, if they're open-minded, now some are just, you know, programmed to want to hear their their generation's music, and that's it. And I understand that. I was like that, you know, when I was younger. Um, but with the, if they're open-minded, I think they hear, wow, this is, like, cool, and this has got energy, and this is this, there's something really exciting and different about this. And so I think that quality sort of transcends the generations. And I think that's one reason why eventually rock music is going to have to come back, because more and more, certainly modern pop music is really getting sterile. I mean, there's some great music out there, but what you hear on the AM, you know, the top 40 radio stations is getting more and more, it's a narrower band of music, and it's, it's not rock at all. It's not very creative. It's very repetitious. And I think sooner or later it's going to pop and some kind of a new, whatever, you, you know, call it a Guns N' Roses or whatever for the new generation, something's going to happen that's going to bring rock back because it has to. Music is, get, you know, when, when the pendulum swings, it's, it's just about swung all the way it can over to boring sterile music <laughs> yeah i, can, <laughs> so I yeah. think i think you know some kind of rock music is going to come back and like i say there are a lot of creative bands like 21 pilots that that do really interesting things it's not exactly rock but there's going to be a new version of it and i think it's coming soon so to answer your question and this is a very long answer by the way sorry no, you're um, fine. i i think it's great when when young people listen to this and maybe it's going to have to something Maybe it's going to help in bringing some kind of a rock music uh, you know, renaissance and revival to a lot of the newer music. And I think it will. Over the long term, I think it will. Because I just see the looks on, those, on people's faces when they're unfamiliar with this and they hear it for the first time. They, they're, they're like, wow, this is, this is really different. <laughs> and, you know, of course, I've been doing it for 30 years. But for them, it's different. And it's cool. And I think it's going to work. Yeah, no, um, I can totally agree with the whole, you're about as far as you can get to the boring stuff. Um, you know, like I said, I am, sadly, you know, when it comes to people my age, I see it, you know, even, I go to an art school and I even see it here. It's just, you know, um, the, the lack of, you know, wanting to, you know, everybody's listening to what's on the radio, so I have to listen to what's on the radio, too. You know, I, you know, don't want to venture out and listen to this and that. And then you come across people like, yeah, I don't want to toot my own horn and say, like, you know, but like me, who, you know, I grew up with this kind of music, you know, I love it, you know, I guess, you know, I guess I can kind of a tr contribute that to the fact that I have been listening to it for so many years, but, you know, I do know a lot of people my age who I've connected with on social media who love this, you know, kind of music. And, um, you know, you see bands, like you said, like uh, Greta Van Fleet is getting a lot of notoriety right now. And um, yeah. bands like that, you know, are definitely coming back. You know, I'm seeing more musicians 
you know, yeah. or younger musicians going out to see, uh, you know, bands, you know, 80s bands on Frontier, you know, like, it's, it's, right. it's coming back, uh, and I, you know, would like, yeah. I always say, you know, my parents get so sick and tired of me saying it, um, that I wish, I wish, wish, wish I was, had been around in the 80s, like, that is, like, the ultimate dream, <laughs> But, you know, uh, they... but it's, it'll be even better if you can be one of the people that is the catalyst for bringing today's version of that back. And yeah. I do think that that's a realistic goal and, and a very distinct possibility. And it, it takes people like yourself. It takes, you know, it takes younger people who have a fresh outlook but yet are not get stuck in the, the doldrum of the the repetitive crap that's that's going on. Yeah. I mean, again, pendulums swing, and there are newer bands that are coming up. Now we just need somebody who's a powerhouse. Like That's why I say a Guns N' Roses, because yeah. Guns N' Roses were such a huge thing. Nirvana was a huge thing. The Beatles were a huge thing. You know, those. we need something like that of a younger band, because it can't be somebody my age, but it's got to be a band that's younger, but has that essence and that element and I think it's going to happen. I, I sense it coming sometime, not all that far from now. Yeah, no, I am. Um, like, and that's... you're going to be partly responsible, and that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody <laughs> tells me. Everyone's like, you know, you're there to carry the torch. And uh, yeah. when, I, when I get upset about the fact that, you know, like, I watch the videos, you know, I watch the... Uh, the, um, they have like Metal Mayhem on VH1 Classic, and I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I was there. Like, it's one of the worst <laughs> things ever. But, uh, you know, I, the way I try to look at it is, you know, doing things like this, exposing fellow, you know, people my age to this kind of music, and I'm definitely there to try and carry the torch. Well, thank you, and keep doing it. And I'm, I, I guarantee you, there's going to be some kind of result. It's there's there's too much there, and and. God, when I hear some of the pop music that I hear right now, uh, yeah, I, I, I just think to myself, God, if I would have heard that 30 years ago, I would have thought people were, were out of their minds for, like, following this and being into this. And, uh, and, and of course, I'm an older guy. So, you know, of course I'm going to think that to a certain degree because every generation has their own kind of music. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't feel that way about... Like when I hear, no, no, listen, when I was young, I guess when I heard Sinatra and Dean Martin and all that stuff, I thought, oh, God, old, old people's music, right? <laughs> but, uh, but there was something about it that was great, and eventually it came back. So mm -hmm. these things do, they do go in circles. They do come around. And I think, uh, I think that there's a rock cycle coming, especially because the world is so... Um, well, it's a divided country. It's a very, it's a scary world. There's a lot of bizarre things going on. When times like that happen, people get creative, and that's when the arts are ultra important. And um, you know, maybe maybe this time we can do rock music that's even even more more important in the way that the '60s rock music was important. Mm -hmm. Maybe that can happen this time. Keep the fun of the '80s, but bring a little importance and a little bit of life-changing experiences to modern rock music, and that's going to be a formula for success. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, it's like, like you said, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where it's, it's the same, same crap that's just being over and over again. It's being, it's like you said, sterile. It's getting, you know, overplayed and overused and even I see it you know and other people my age who don't listen to rock music are, are almost kind of getting sick of it a little bit so right yeah right. well you know you know what's funny is I have a friend a very dear friend who is one of those pop songwriters and and he's on one of those teams you know it's like generally like eight or ten different people and the way that they construct the songs is they come into the session and the producer will say okay we're going to do this chord progression today and you, you, you take care of the beat. You come up with the beats. You, you, uh, you make the instruments for the chord progression. Okay, you, you're going to work on the hook. You're going to, I mean, <laughs> it yeah. is a factory. There's a reason why it sounds like that. It's an assembly line. Um, and that's how a lot of the pop music is being made right now. And that can't last because that's not going to have staying power. Um, you know, it's, it's just like at the, right before the Beatles came out, um, Pop music got into a really sterile, formulaic, boring, lifeless place, you know, with these 
really sappy singers and all that kind of thing. And that was the signal that something big was going to happen. And I think we're in a similar spot because yeah. how much worse can you get than an assembly line to create music? Yeah, Where's no. the emotion in that? Where's the feeling in that? And uh, so it's time. Yes, no, I, I definitely agree. Um, and, yeah, people are getting sick of the bland crap. And, uh, yeah, we're, I can feel it, too. We're, it's coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. So ask me about the last in line. Yes, so I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so you produced that record. I produced the first one, and we're recording a second one right now that is phenomenal. Great. It is absolutely phenomenal. Vivian Campbell just left here a little while ago. Uh, we've been working all day. It's, it's just going to be a great record. Uh, and I played a couple of the songs for the Frontiers people, and they were really excited. It's going to be... Uh, you know, it's it's rare when a, when there's a great debut, it's really hard to follow it up. Mm -hmm. These guys are. It's, if anything, a stronger record, and I love the last record. So it's it's just going to be amazing. And uh, that's that's due to come out in September of 2018. That's the plan right now. So um, it's going to be a hell of a fall in 2018, I can tell you that. <laughs> after, the, after everybody's worn out from the foreigner white snake... <laughs> Jason Bottom tour, they can go home and mellow out and buy a couple, a, a last in line and a super stroke record. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, I'm so excited to hear that. Um, so I think uh, that kind of leads into my next question for you. Um, you know, I grew up listening to, like I said, a whole different kind of music. Um, and Dio was one of them. You know, I love Ronnie James Dio. My dad loves Ronnie James Dio. He has a huge, you know, tattoo of him on his arm. You know, we big, oh, cool. we are big Dio fans. Um, so, you know, and one of those things, you know, that I've heard growing up is that, you know, I never had the opportunity to meet him or I sadly never had the chance to see him live, which really breaks my heart. But I have heard mm -hmm. that he is just the great, he was the greatest guy. And, uh, I'm sure uh, yeah, he, you can attest to that, that that was true. He was, uh, wow, he was a really special person. And there's there's very few days when, when I don't think about him at some point because not only was he probably the greatest metal voice of all time um, and uh, an, an incredible musician, an incredible band leader. God, I learned a lot from him. Um, but he was also one of the most soulful and real human beings and one of the dearest friends I've ever had. Um, so like I say, I, I miss him. Certainly I miss his voice and certainly I all, all of that. But even as a friend, I just really miss him because he was, he was a one of a kind human being. He would give you the shirt off his back. And, and he had an incredible capacity when he would meet fans he would remember them year after year, and he—I mean, he would—he would stand out in front of the bus for two, three hours. Sign, he would sign everybody's stuff. You know, I mean, sometimes there was 150 people that would line up to get signed after the show, to get something signed after the show, and in, in the tour bus, at least in the tour I did with him, tours I did with him, and he would sign everybody's everything. He'd stand there. I mean, even in winter, I mean, it was incredible. I've never seen anybody be more dedicated to their fans. He is such an example of that. But he would remember things. He would say, oh, uh, yeah, hey, how are your dad doing? You remember you told, you were telling me last night? <laughs> he was like that. <laughs> I mean, he was a brilliant guy, so he had an amazing capacity to remember. But but it was he was so down to earth and so real and... and uh, I just, I, I can't explain it. I've never known anyone quite like him. And uh, and his friendship meant the world to me. And his, I mean, being in a band with him meant the world to me. I mean, it taught me so much about really how to be in a great band. Because, you know, Dawkins was a great band. It really was. But we learned through the years to become a great live band. And, in fact, the biggest jump we ever made is in 84 and 85 when we toured with Dio. Mm -hmm. um, that's when we really learned how to be a great live band. Because George and I would watch Dio every night. We'd say, okay, we got to do that. We, you know, this, we, it was how we learned. You know, mm -hmm. We watched. We watched Masters. They were amazing a lot. And it helped Dokken a lot. And then being in Ronnie's band in the 90s, 
uh, I really, and I learned so many things about headlining. And I mean, he knew every aspect, every part of a tour. He knew where the rigging points were. He knew where, <laughs> what the lighting guys, you know, lighting console was set up like. And I mean, he knew. It. He loved him. Everybody worked their asses off for him. It was incredible uh, because he was that kind of guy. And yes, to answer your question, he was an amazing person. A great guy as well as being the legend that he is and always will be. And thank God we have the legacy of his music that lives on. Yeah, um, I like I said, it, it breaks my heart that I uh, never had the opportunity to see him. But when you you know mentioned the thing about him staying up there and signing everything for his fans, you know, uh, I've you know, been in that position where you know I have waited outside a bus or you know a door for somebody, and it like it makes you like. All those people, you know, th that's a moment that they will never forget. Right. It's it's an right. irre irreplaceable, priceless moment, you know, that they will never forget. And, you know, artists that are so humble and are so, you know, thankful for people who take the time to go out and, uh, you know, see shows and, you know, buy albums and listen to the records. Like, it's quite a thing. And it's, you know... When you get an artist like that, you know, it's just, it, it, it makes a fan's whole, you know, it keeps their perspective of you, you know, great. You know, you know, when you, if you meet a fan or you meet a, you know, an artist and they're, you know, a total, you know, jerk, like it kind of turns you off from the whole thing. Yeah, as it should, because there's no reason to be a jerk. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it, it, it kind of <laughs> just, you know, makes you, you know, changes your perspective on the music. You know, as yeah, it it does. I know. I've I've seen. I've had that experience. Um, I remember one time meeting Jackson Brown, and this would be probably '84. Actually, George and I met him, and he was a complete butt. And I just remember thinking, eh, I don't really want to ever listen or deal with that guy again. <laughs> he was just really full of himself and didn't want to talk and. I was I was offended. It's like you know you, you may be a successful artist, but you're only successful because of the fans. Yeah. So I can't stand it when I see you know people with that kind of attitude. And I don't know. Maybe Jackson Brown's a nice guy now, but <laughs> <laughs> but 33 years ago he wasn't. Um, at least not, not that day. And listen, there's times when you're going to run into people and they're going to be in a bad mood. And you know there's there is all that. You know that they're, you know artists are human and you know. It, Sometimes they get judged a little harshly because, you know, sometimes artists are shy. They're just shy by nature, and so they're not going to necessarily be outgoing to people. Mm -hmm. And p sometimes people judge that as being, you know, stuck up or whatever, and that's not the case. But there are a lot of jerks out there who just think that they're much more important than they really are. I mean, this is... This is a rock band that we're talking about. It's not, you know, we're not changing the political landscape or flying someone to the moon, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, keep, keep it in check here. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, one of the nicest uh, people and bands that I've ever met, which would kind of tie into the next question I have for you, um, you know, Alice Cooper is one of my favorite artists, and oh. his band is, yeah. like, some of the nicest people I've ever met in my life, and, you know... Yeah, um, they are. And I know Tommy, which I know who you're good friends with. Um, yeah. I'd actually... Uh, I, I'm great friends with him. We, uh, I saw him, was it last year? And I was standing outside the venue and we were talking and I had a docking pin on my shirt, on my jacket. <laughs> and he was like, hey, Sydney, you like docking? And he starts talking about you and <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> no, Tommy and I go back a long ways. And yeah, Tommy's a great guy. The Alice Cooper guys are great. Tommy's a really, really talented guy too. He's, He's far more talented than you could ever even possibly imagine just watching Alice Cooper or even uh, Hollywood Vampires. He's he's a really, really talented guy, and he's a good guy, and he's funny as can be. <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's hilarious. I understand that one. Yeah, no, and you guys did, you know, War and Peace together. We sure did. You know, so... We sure uh, did. That was pretty much our... I mean, we pretty much wrote most of it ourselves. I mean, Russ wrote some, too, but, I mean, it was... That was pretty much our baby, and uh, I mean, my God, we we did the whole thing. You know, we lived together. I mean, he lived with me for quite a while, and 
And then when he ended up getting his own record deal, he bought a house right down the street. <laughs> so, and we were, you know, we did a lot of productions together. And yeah, we were we were really really close for a long time. And you know, I mean, I miss him when when I don't see him, but uh, I know he's doing great, and that's that makes me feel a lot better. You know, I um I love them all, and whenever I see him, um. I, you know, it's, they're just the nicest people, and he, you know. They really are. They, they all make me feel, you know, which, you know, is, means the world to me. Like, you know, we were talking about, you know, with artists and fans earlier, is that, you know, they, they make me feel like I'm more than just a fan. Right, which, right. And yeah. Alice could not be more down Oh, earth. my gosh. You know, he could really couldn't. And, and he doesn't take himself seriously, which I love. And, and he's just a really good guy. He just is a really good guy, and I love seeing that. That's. I, I'm with you. It's like, that's what it should be. I mean, you know, when you think about it, music and the people that listen to it, they don't exist without the other. Yes, you can make music in a vacuum, but I don't care who you are. You want your music to be heard. So the people that you are, that are reacting to your music or listening to your music are as much a part of your creation as you are whether you admit it or not. <laughs> yeah. And so to me, it's always been about the two things meeting. That's a magical show is when the band is on fire, the audience reacts and is on fire, and the two connect. That's a magical show. And like I say, if you think that the whole idea of performing is for you standing up there and just gratifying your own ego and not caring what people think because you think you're an artist, I think you have the wrong perspective, and I think you're fooling yourself. Because I don't think anybody gets up on a stage without wanting to get the appreciation or the feedback from the crowd. Mm -hmm. So it is about the synergy. And to me, again, that's what makes the magic, and that's what makes music magic. You know, music is a magical thing, and it's, it's, it's so incredibly special. But it's, it, it is a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, interactive experience. It really is. And anybody that forgets that, like I say, they're full of it. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I actually just talked with uh, Jeff Tate last uh, weekend, and you know, we spoke about, you know, live shows are, th to me, there's nothing like going to a live show. There's nothing like it. Um, sure. You know, it's one of those things where you're connecting between the artists and the audience, and it is truly one of the best experiences, you know, seeing, you know, it's, it's what made me want to go into this um, industry. Well, great. That's good. That's good. That's how it should be. The live experience should be the driving force. I mean, listening to the music, too, should be a driving force. But, but you're right. There is something about the live experience that is um, the ultimate, because even though you can listen to a record and interact with the music kind of on an emotional level, it, there's an actual vibe there when you're doing it live that is so important. Now, why do you think people like live albums? I mean, why, why, wouldn't, why wouldn't you just want to listen to the studio record unless there's something special about a live album? Yeah. And that's what it is. You know, they're, they're just, you know, being there and being with, you know... A, people who love the same music you do and love the band and you know it's just it's an experience that you know i i know people my age who have never been to a concert and it's like wow you that blows my mind you just that have, like, really yeah. blows my mind but you know what that shows you the state music has been in because i mean i started going to concerts well the first one i ever went to i was 12 but then i really started going a lot when i was 14 and, I mean, I saw Zeppelin, and, you know, I mean, I saw so many great things. Um, but, I mean, starting at 14, and from there, I mean, nonstop. I mean, I would go try and go as often as somebody came to town. That was the thing to do. And, uh, I, I mean, if that's not there to your generation, something huge is missing. I mean, I know this is also the era of video games and cell phones and this, that, and the other thing. and All, all that's great, but, you know, think about it. The rock music experience is really a huge part of youth, and it's got to be there. It's got to be. If, or, or some equivalent, but I don't think a video game's an equivalent. <laughs> so, yeah, no. you know... You know, maybe somebody's going to come up with rock musical theater that you can interact with on your hologram telephone. Or something. <laughs> I don't know, but whatever it is, it's got to be there. And if there's kids your age that 
have them in the concerts. God, I don't want to be them. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, it's, it baffles my mind, you know, whenever I hear somebody who's like, I've, you've never been to a concert, it's like, you know, my first no. concert was American, the American Idiot Tour, was Green Day when I was five years old. Huh. You wow. know, like, I'm going to, I wow. was, I saw Green Day at Giants Stadium when I was five. <laughs> oh. Wow, how cool. <laughs> so, you know, like, it baffles my mind when, you know, it's, there are people who are 18 or 19 years old, and it's like, you've never been to a concert? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, no, so, um... Well, you're out to change all that, and I love that. <laughs> That's a really great thing. You know, if I, and it's like, I, you know, I have to take you to your first concert, because it's like, it, it's just, yeah, it's baffling. I don't, you know, it's, there's really, you know, nothing like it, especially if you're a music lover. You know, you're somebody who loves music. You know, there's, there is nothing like seeing... You know, the person who made the music you love, you know, performing, you know, what you love, you know, right in front of you. It's just, it's priceless. Well, awesome. Well, I think that's probably a good note to end on. I kind of got to get going because um, I need to take my daughter to see her grand granddad down the street who is having some health issues right now. So I should probably do that. Oh, but, that's uh, fine. Thank you so much for this, Sydney. This was great. Um, I'm so glad you're doing this. Um Keep up the good work. Look forward to meeting you this summer. And um, hopefully by then, maybe I'll have sneak copies of either Last in Line or Super Stroke or maybe both. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you're going to really enjoy the Foreigner show. I really do. You know, I'm definitely excited for that. And thank you so much for speaking with me tonight. Like I said, you know, this was a real honor for me to talk with you and um, to have you on my show. And, uh, yes, I'm definitely looking forward to meeting you. And Foreigner should be a great time. Great. Well, I'm glad we did this, Sydney, and we'll do it again uh, as we get... Oh, oh, you know what we didn't even talk about? Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't believe this. And you're a Dockin' fan. Um, you know, the Dockin' DVD is coming out. Yes, uh, yes, DVD it is. DVD and CD are coming out in March. Oh, my God, I can't believe this. But anyways, <laughs> um, and that's coming out in March. And um, that's the live show from that we did last year on the reunion. It's a combination of the shows in Japan and the one show we did over here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but So not only is it a live DVD and recording, but there's also uh, a new song that we did, and we're actually doing the video for it next week. Oh, wow. Um, and it's a new song that we wrote, which we were... It's it's shocking. It came out so great. <laughs> I mean, how, I, I, mean I, was, I was amazed at how well it came together. The song came out really cool. It's called It's Just Another Day. Mm -hmm. um, so that's coming out... I don't know when the single's going to necessarily come out, but I know that the plan is for the DVD and, and CD to come out in March. So maybe we can do this again in March and talk about that when that comes out. Oh, yeah, for sure. Do a little promoting sure. on that. And uh, that would be great. And like I say, watch with it. We also did a couple of songs, uh, a couple of older docking songs that we remade acoustically that came out really beautiful. Yeah, um, I um, and you know Don is Don is sounding really good on these on the new song and mm -hmm. these acoustic things. So it's it's really encouraging. Yeah, I uh, don't think I can end this interview without telling you that my all time favorite Dawkins song. I don't know why I love it so much. I love it. Um, is the Hunter? It is like <laughs> really? my favorite Dawkins song to ever exist. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, everybody who knows me is probably sick and tired of me playing the song, but yeah, I just wanted to like thank you for writing that. Like I don't. Well, actually, isn't there a uh, there's a band that named themselves after one of the lyrics from the Hunter? What is it? Uh, oh crap! What is it? Um, um, I, yeah, there's, there is some younger band out there that actually I know they named themselves off off of one of the lines in the Hunter, but. Anyways, well, well, thank you. That's a very kind thing to yeah, say. Yeah, it is. It's just I just um, have to thank you for writing that because that song is just like probably one of my favorite songs to ever exist. And I just had to mention that before uh, I that, close this. That's so bizarre. That's so bizarre. But that's great. <laughs> All right, Sydney. Well, thank you so much, and I'm sure we'll talk again. Let's talk again in March when the the Doc and DVD comes out. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to do that. Like I said, thank you so much again. This was an honor, and um, I really hope you have a great night. I, I'm sure I will. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.